All right, here we are. So I made a few changes. I finished a few pieces out. I, I thought it made sense to just go ahead and kind of push this to what might look like a semi-final state. So there's a couple little additional things in here that I added. I made the wings a little bit thinner. It wasn't uh, anything fancy. And then I added this piece. This is what it looks like with live Boolean disabled. You can see these, these are just negatives. This is just a cylinder that I added in and then made some modifications to. That's what it looks like at its low poly. Again, pretty straightforward. Nothing new there. These are the insert mesh pieces. Just very, very simple, basic primitives. These are something that I built for that shape. And there's another version of it like up here. And um, I've got a, it's pretty easy to do it. I'll just make one like super quick. Just a little demo. Find my Z-sphere. So if I wanted to put something here, let me go ahead and turn on edit topology. And it can be a nice way to add in some variety to your 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 forms. So the way I start it is I try to make a strip that's around the same thickness. It's sort of consistent, and I'll put like at least one little bend in it, something like that. Uh, go ahead and make apply mesh 3D, and we'll just depend it here to the bottom. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out uh, which where that subtool is, and then we can do an, an insert because again, I don't want it talking to anything other than what it's supposed to be talking to. So, but I want this to be really thin, and it's it's hard to retop with the with the Z sphere to make it as thin as you might like it, but you can very easily. Uh, looks like I, I may be a little. Oh, that's still the maybe the Z sphere. All right, so I didn't add six faces, so that's why it's all that's all jacked up like that. So give me one second. Uh, the Z sphere really prefers to have at least six faces before it's going to know what you're asking for. And it looks like maybe something down here didn't weld. Yeah, look at that. Going a little bit too fast. And what does that look like? That's probably better, but just to be on the safe side, we'll add an extra little piece in there. So we have our count. And we'll just repeat that process. Make poly mesh. Turn solo off. Grab a different uh, subtool so I can use the Alt to select this guy. And then we'll go to, whoops, not append. We want insert. There's the new one. All right, if I look on the bottom, cool, it's calling. All right, anyway, as I was saying, so we want to grab insert and we'll just put an edge close to one of the other edges and then we can just get rid of this piece here. Whoops, we'll hit delete it, uh, hidden there. I'm going to throw a little inflate and then we're, we'll use Q mesh, set to polygroup all of the target and we'll just kind of push it in. We'll set up a little bit of creasing after we flip it. I'll make sure we've got this set to edge of complete in this case. There and there, turn on our dynamic subdivision. You can see the edges here are getting kind of squishy. So just to crease those up real easy, we can just hit crease. And then we'll set this to our usual setting of whatever and whatever. And if I turn on my Boolean and enable this as a sub, you'll begin to see what's going on. Now, of course, the Z sphere is probably still there. So let's just get rid of that. So that's like the, the easy way to make a little slot and then to add some small amount of detail to it, just to make it kind of more interesting. We'll use insert uh, to throw an edge loop in there and whoops, one in there. We can get rid of this guy. Uh, do a Q mesh there. I'll just slide some of these edges and we can do a slide on this vert there and there. Maybe it's the other way. I like to do it down here. And we'll throw some creases on these edges very quickly and easily. Let me just do a slide on that so we get these these faces to be a little bit less distorted. Crease polygroups, get those edges there. Okay, whatever. That's probably good for the demo. And then we can hit solo. 
and you see what the result is. You don't have to put the little notch in there, but you can totally mess with it after it's already set up. I kind of like the notch because it suggests maybe get a screwdriver in there and pop it off. And then let's see, the other stuff here is one more thing I want to show you, which I think is kind of cool, which is for the autosave here. Oh, I added uh, a little, again, just simple cylinder back there for, for some kind of a thruster, perhaps. But there's uh, some stuff that's it's, uh, not obvious. I'm going to hit solo here, and I'm going to get rid of one of these things. We'll do a delete hidden. And so what you can do, if you use the new tool here, I'm going to go ahead and reset my rotation, center the object, is if you hit this little gear thing, you can get some deformers. And one of them is this, this bend arc deformer. So it's fine the way it is. I could totally just use a move brush or something, but you can also, it's a little strange because this thing is not oriented in any kind of like world spacey sort of way. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to hit solo. We'll just reset the rotations on this. So it's kind of a little more regular. Doesn't, it definitely doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, we're just getting a little bit closer to the bounding box, which is how it's going to set up these bend arcs. And I don't really know exactly which one I need to pull on, but yeah, there we go. One of these is going to give me a nice, predictable, consistent bend, and if you enable dynamic subdivision, it will do a pretty good job there. And then, so now this has this, this lovely curvature on it. I'm going to, uh, you know what, I think you just hit the, the gear thing, and let's see, gizmo 3D, and now I can just scoot this thing back. Kind of rebuild those rotations to whatever looks good. And now it has this pleasant little bend to it, which is, I guess, mathematically pretty perfect. And then we can just do a very simple mirror and weld. And so now we've got two. Now, I'm not crazy about that as a location. I think it might be a little bit cooler if it's like down here somewhere. I think that's where the the antenna actually is for this species. Whoops, let me make sure I turn on my uh, my symmetry. So, you know, just to have a little extra something that we can we can add, try to find a, a flat spot where it would make sense to have something like this. Sure. Okay, and then uh, the last thing that I want to talk about very quickly is what do you do from here? So we'll just take a look at this one little piece here. And we can see it here in the stacks. I've got a million of these things, and some of them have live booleans going on, some of them don't. Um, almost all of them have dynamic setup, the, the dynamic sub D. So these are my two pieces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and click on the I, which will isolate the visibility. This is different from solo. This is actually changing the visibility. And let me try that again. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a new piece of geometry that has this Boolean operation actually committed to it. In fact, you know, we're getting a bit close to time, so I'm going to pause the video here and we'll, we'll pick this up in the next one.